Okay. One of the problems we found with Whisper is that the drift on the IC9700 in, is too great for it to decode on two meters. We have, however, found that if you run it at 50% duty cycle, the fan comes on reasonably consistently and holds it reasonably stable okay. and it will decode. However, if you run it at 10 or 20% duty cycle, the fan goes off for an extended period and then when it comes on, it drifts That's rapidly and doesn't decode. So the purpose of this test is to transmit at 20% duty cycle to Hayden's receiver and see if it decodes. Now, because the fan has been off, we would expect that as soon as we start transmitting, the fan will come on and it will drift rapidly the first time and it will not decode. Now we're not GPS locked either, this is just uh, uh, the radios. We, we are not GPS locked. Be, yep. be, in fact, the radio is incapable of GPS locking. That's the problem. Yep. Uh, so it's, it is a test of the performance of the internal oscillator in the radio. Oh, yeah, but it's stronger, is it? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so we are now transmitting... Yeah, look at the... ...about 20 watts. Did it decode? No, it didn't decode. Oh, right. No. Okay. Uh, now, now we're looking at Hayden's receiving me, and yes, it did decode, didn't it? No, that was the previous the one. The previous yeah. one. Okay. You will notice there's a lot of drift, and the, and the end result of that was it did not decode. Uh, now, the fan was running, and that is what changes the temperature of the oscillator and causes the drift. What we're now going to do is start transmitting at, can you transmit at 100%? Yep. Yeah, we'll transmit at 100%, so hopefully the fan will run all the time and we'll start to get it in the code. That was the first time the fan was running. That's right. Yes, because the fan was not running for the previous one that did decode. And the receiving station's GPS locked as well. Yes. So we're... Oh, that's right. Probably had enough time for the oscillator to cool down without the fan. Mm. So the first one might not decode, but then after that, I suspect it will. Yeah. We're up. So transmitting there. Yep. And we're receiving. We transmitted immediately after the previous one so that the fan is running all the time and keeping the temperature reasonably constant. The drift now is much less and it did decode. So the short conclusion of this is if you run Whisper at a high duty cycle, the radio will work. But if you run it at a low duty cycle, as people normally run Whisker, the drift is too high and it, and it does not work. The first we're going to do is have a look at the accuracy of the auto calibration. Now, at the moment, this rig is set up with firmware version 1.05, which has uh, fairly poor auto calibration. In fact, we've seen auto calibration errors of up to 4 hertz at 2 meters and 40 hertz at 1296. The test will be to measure some auto calibration errors with this firmware and then change the firmware to 1.06 and establish whether that improves the auto calibration as we would expect based on one of the main reasons for issuing 1.06. What we're now going to do is a auto calibration test using the 
1.05 firmware, which is uh, not reliable for auto calibration. And then we're going to later update to 1.06 to look at the improvement. Now you can see here on Spectrum Lab, the signal has been drifting. That's because we had been transmitting earlier and the uh, oscillator is stabilizing. Uh, that sort of drift from there to there is about uh, 12 hertz. Uh, so to do an order calibration, we, it should come out exactly on 1000 hertz because we're using a GPS locked reference uh, and we're going to auto calibrate to a GPS locked reference. Except I haven't got it plugged in. Just a sec. <laughs> we'll edit that out in post. That's all right. <laughs> in order to auto calibrate, we go to the menu. We go to set. We go to function. And we have now reference adjust. And if we press it's this. 4042. Uh, we have a, an auto calibration function. So we will press this. And we say, yes, it's adjusting. And now if we look over here, we will see it has adjusted to try and correct it. Unfortunately, it corrected it to 994 hertz, which put it six hertz off. So it was actually worse than it was before we corrected it. <laughs> uh, that's not too much of a worry because after all, this is the firmware that is not supposed to be useful for auto correction. <laughs> so now we'll load 1.06. We, we, we'll, we'll do another test of the auto oh, correction okay. yep. uh, to see whether we can improve it at all. And now it looks like it's actually going to come up this time right on 1000 hertz. So what's the reason behind having to do it twice? Uh, random... Roulette. <laughs> good, good, good question that no one knows the answer this to. But that's probably why they produced another set of firmware. Okay. <laughs> so we go to menu, then set, Some SD card. That I haven't figured out how to handle. And, and you select firmware that. update. Antenna out there. You have to make sure Another that the firmware is in the 9700 folder on the SD card. And there it is listed. Critical. Yeah, so the ground. tap on yeah. the firmware. Yeah, I don't, at the moment, no. It'll we'll say it'll take it looks very impressive. Harvey two had minutes a two-meter antenna. <laughs> <laughs> it's too many, too many, too many cells. No, it's really good. It was stable, Rex. It's only got two meters. Two meters uh, at 10, uh, maybe uh, 10 milliwatts. There we go, 1.06. And we're back on. Uh, the frequency is actually moved over 20 hertz and is now off the screen so we are going to do another uh, auto calibration uh, another auto calibration we have to go to press auto calibration we say yes and it's now come back close but not exactly on a thousand hertz did a few jumps getting there. Oh, maybe it is coming out at a thousand hertz. It's just taking a while to get. Ah, it is actually coming back very close to a thousand hertz, but it's already drifting off. <laughs> it's still drifting because the radio is still cooling down. Yes. So at least one test of auto calibration in 1.06 got it very close. Uh, we will just watch while the radio drifts off. And then we will do another auto calibration. <laughs> Calibrate again. This time it brought it back close, but not exactly on a thousand hertz. The auto calibrate was out probably about half a hertz. Notice it's drifting the other way. And it's now drifting the other... I think it was about to drift the other way there. Mm. <laughs> Fan has stopped completely. We are seeing massive drift. Uh, 
so we're going to do another auto calibrate. Okay, it did get very close to a thousand hertz, but within a few seconds it's drifted off again. <laughs> okay, what we've got here is the drift on 1296 where we have looked at using auto calibration. Now, you can see. Here is a thousand hertz, and you can see at this point we did an auto calibration to bring it from here to here, and it was only about one hertz off. But from in this time we did an auto calibration, and it was seven hertz off. Uh, I have seen auto calibrations all the way from one, six, two point five up to 7 hertz off at 1296 and at 2 meters it's generally less than 1 hertz. Now that compares to 4 hertz at 2 meters and 40 hertz at 1296 on the uh, firmware version 1.5, 1.05. So it looks like 1.06 has certainly improved the uh, uh, auto calibration by about a factor of four. Uh, however, we are still seeing jumps of several hertz at 1296, would, which means that if you did continuously auto calibrate to keep the, the radio on frequency, you would be introducing jumps all the time. So it doesn't look like it's a solution to uh, having a, 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 the equivalent of a GPS lock radio. Uh, and I think one can only conclude the only real way of doing this is a proper uh, phased locked GPS system.